Coco Shipyard closed SpaceX Starship updates and NASA goes private. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. As always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship updates. Now today's Starship updates are going to be something big. I've been told quite a few things about the Coco construction site by an insider who wants to stay anonymous. This is another of those wonderful videos by John Winkop. He's been busy for the past few months providing us with priceless aerial views of what we became to know as the Coco construction site. Internally, this site was known as the Sitco site as it's at Sitco Road in Coco, Florida. We watched SpaceX construct the Mark II prototype. Initially brought to life by SpaceX to have a second redundant site for Starship development. Promoted by Elon Musk as an internal race, the project changed into a collaboration where both sides could share knowledge and help each other to speed up development. Where at the Boca Chica site, SpaceX managed to produce Mark I, which later became Poptop Orby, the Sitco site did not get that far. Soon it became apparent that Florida, even though its prototype looked more shiny, seemed to not make as much progress. Even until today, many parts are still missing. The site itself cannot launch a prototype either, as it lacks a proper launch facility. The Starship launch site for Florida is at Kennedy Space Center, to be precise at Pad 39A. To get a Starship from the Sitco site to KSC is not as easy as it seems. It requires a highly busy highway to be closed and it even requires the prototype to be loaded onto a barge to continue its way to KSC on the water. So generally speaking, the site is not perfect at all. Now I had a talk with someone who worked there but wants to stay anonymous for obvious reasons. And this talk cleared up quite a few things about what's happening there right now. In short, the Coco prototype site has been cancelled. That's right. There will not be any further development in Coco. It's not clear yet what is going to happen with Mark II, but it's doubtful to say the least if it will ever fly. 80% of the workforce has been laid off. They've all been offered jobs either in Boca Chica or in California at the Hawthorne site. Some even went to seek new employments with Blue Origin at Kennedy Space Center where the party is going to start very soon to get New Glenn up and running. That's not all I learned though. Apparently, the rings that were laying around were initially intended for use on the prototype. They could not use them though because all of them had a slightly different size. So there were problems with the barrel machine. Workers tried to make it work but in the end the decision was made to scrap them. It's no secret that SpaceX is all about speed when it comes to Starship development. Visual progress is rated as very important and so the crew in Florida did everything they could to make it show. The problem here was that a lot of manufacturing quality got lost in the process. SpaceX refused to use X-ray machines to inspect wells as it would have taken too long. Understandable if you make groundbreaking research, not so much if you want to get something to work properly. These barrels or ring segments as we know them are made with PA or plasma arc welding. This is a technique where gas is turned into plasma which forms an arc and extremely concentrates the heat in the process. Two gases are needed for this, a plasma gas and a shielding gas to protect the weld. This produces narrow welds that penetrate deeply into the material and in return make rapid welding speeds possible. It's a technique particularly useful when welding stainless steel. A standard procedure though to make sure that the welds are of an even and good quality is to use x-ray to check for imperfections. This process was skipped to speed up the build process. In return, the end result was unpredictable, which resulted in a Mark II prototype that might never see any action. So in short, SpaceX decided to change course. We've already seen this change at the Boca Chica site. On my last episode, I showed the first steps of Mark III construction being performed right now. All of what we can see so far looks very different from Mark I and even Mark II. The same barrel machine that was used in Florida is finally being used in Texas as well. The new bulkhead looks much more precise and not as crude and rough as what we saw for Mark 1. SpaceX wants to make this generation of prototypes count and has left most of the old ways behind. But what's going to happen next in Florida? SpaceX is going to invest more time than we thought. 
The process of creating a new and improved construction site at Kennedy Space Center's Roberts Road is going to take longer than just a week or two. As seen on last Thursday's episode, SpaceX will properly prepare the new land and build out a full shipyard before getting together a new team. This will take so long that it did not make any sense to keep the old crew. I wouldn't be surprised now if we wouldn't see any construction in Florida for at least two to three months. It will definitely not be an instant switch with seamless continuation of prototype development. So right now it seems like Boca Chica will be our main focus for a while. At least until Roberts Road is ready for business. Coco will definitely not make any further progress on Mark II. This will make covering the progress much easier for now as Boca Chica has so many talented people on site getting new pictures out on a daily basis. Business in Texas is continuing at the usual speed. The new metal parts we see arriving every day now are form pressed metal sheets. Meaning that they've been pre-manufactured to a precise form in a hydraulic press. This results in pre-produced parts with much less tolerance. Where before, parts for bulkheads were often cut with grinders by hand and then just welded into place, these parts are designed to fit into a specific position, resulting in a much more precise fit and a part that in theory can withstand much more force. The bulkhead has already been transferred into the large windbreaker, so that's where the new tank section most likely will be built. Again, out of the open into a more protected area. SpaceX has also been busy getting the first ring segment from the barrel maker out and right away made a second one. If this pace is kept up, we should very soon see a first base of the new tank section go up. SpaceX is continuing work on the launch site as well. The area is getting bigger and bigger every day. Grading and filling work has turned the whole place into a busy site. More and more sand is brought in as a foundation for… yeah, for what? As we can see in Charles Brothers footage, the newly claimed land is bigger than the new landing pad and we still don't know what's being built there. It would definitely be large enough to build a launch tower as we saw it in the launch animation at the Starship presentation back in September. This would be yet another undoubtable proof that SpaceX does not only want to use the Boca Chica site for the prototypes, but long term. So there you have it, Coco is no more. The workers are mostly gone and the barrel maker to make the ring segments is already at Roberts Road. There will be no more progress on Mark II and as soon as Roberts Road is done, all the equipment and the prototype itself will just be transported to Kennedy Space Center. And as always, if you liked the update, make sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe, it helps a lot. And a quick reminder again, I'll be streaming the CIS-19 launch on Wednesday. Launch time is 12.51 EST, which is 17.51 UTC. So make sure to check in and watch the first launch of B-1059 together with me. NASA goes private. In September 2014, NASA announced it would fund two commercial crew capsules to ensure the ability of the United States to launch humans into space. Since the shuttle program was cancelled, the United States had to rely on Russian-built Soyuz rockets to get into orbit. Then, in June this year, NASA announced that it would open up the ISS for private crewed missions and that the station would be capable of supporting up to two such private missions per year for up to 30 days each. Now NASA is going even one step further. On November 26th, an official statement was released that NASA is planning to purchase single seats on these private missions. NASA intends to do research on short-term missions to investigate the effects on human physiology and psychology caused by short missions into space in preparation for Moon and later Mars missions. At least that's the official statement. NASA also stated though that it wants to further help build a low Earth orbit economy. By buying seats on these private flights, NASA would drive down costs for other customers willing to send private astronauts into space. If you only have to sell three out of the four available seats to private customers, the task becomes much easier. Another really interesting fact about this announcement is that NASA would have the same status on these missions as on Soyuz missions. Just a paying customer along for the ride. No say in how and when to do it. This is another strong signal for NASA's intent to build up service providers rather than doing all of it by themselves. NASA wants to build these companies up to at one point only be another customer booking services from a provider. In return, this would free up a lot of resources enabling NASA to focus on the important tasks such as research and mission planning. This is a step into the right direction if you ask me. 
NASA has always excelled at driving research and pushing the boundaries of what we know about space. With the shuttle program and also with the space launch system which is right now in development, a lot of these resources needed for the research are eaten up by rocket construction and maintenance of these launch vehicles. If NASA is able to outsource these aspects, they can finally return to exploration rather than vehicle building. A very good decision, go NASA! So this wraps up today's episode of What About It? Did you expect SpaceX to shut down the Coco site so quickly and is NASA on the right track to a private low earth economy? As always, tell me in the comments. And here we are again, the patron shout out. This is the section of What About It? that is dedicated to those who tirelessly help to make the show happen. All the moderators on Wednesday's livestream, for example, are patrons. They help, research and provide funding and they built the best community I could have possibly hoped for. And as on every single episode, there are more who joined the ranks of the team. So everyone, please give a warm welcome to Philip Bailey and many others. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? If you liked what you saw, remember to hit the like and the subscribe button because that helps the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content. As this gives me the time to focus on what I love doing the most, to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. We'll properly prepare the new property. What? <laughs> So there you have it. Coco is mostly gone. What? <laughs> oh no! If nice, if ni nicer, <laughs> nicer. <laughs>